Shalom. This video is trying to address the question of happiness from a Jewish perspective. People think they're happier if they earn more money, if they have a, more possessions, a bigger house, a nicer car, that'll lead to happiness. But if that were true, then Americans would be very happy, and Americans are not. Study after study shows that there's been no increase in the quotient of happiness, despite increased living standards and increased lives. In fact, the richer the people are, there's no correlation with increased happiness. Materialism doesn't seem to be the answer. In fact, some people think it's quite the opposite. There's a hedonic treadmill. The more we get on it, the more we think that our happiness will come from the next material possession. It turns out that that's not right. And yet, happiness is a very huge concept in Judaism. Uh, for example, Rabbi Nachman of Braslav said, Mitzvah gedola lehiot besimcha tamid. It's a great mitzvah to be always happy. Or we say, uh, and from the psalm, Zehayom asa Adonoi nagila venis mechabo. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be sameach on it. We talk about the holidays being out, sameach, chag sameach, happy holiday. Or for Sukkot, the Torah says, lehiot ach sameach. You should be especially happy. So what is happiness from a Jewish perspective? Well, one of the things that it says in answering the question rhetorically, who is rich, in the Talmud, Mi Ashir, it says, Misameach Bechelko, the one who is satisfied with his portion. So, in fact, being Sameach in Judaism and being rich have to do with being satisfied with your portion. Materialism is not the answer to joy, true happiness. Now, the quest for happiness is a huge issue. There's an Israeli scholar at Harvard who offers classes in happiness, and they're oversubscribed all the time, trying to examine what it is that makes people happy. And of course, there's lots of people on antidepressant medication. Sometimes it's a serious illness, but it's also a symptom of a society which says, I'm not happy. Why? Because true happiness for God, has, for Jews, has to do with God, for religion. In fact, when you ask the question from lots of perspectives, the answer becomes very clear. For example, which city in Israel has the highest life expectancy? And one of the curiosities, it's also the city that is the poorest city per capita in Israel. So clearly wealth and life, long life don't have to do necessarily with materialism and even being above the poverty level. And the answer there is B'nai Brak, longest life expectancy and uh, the poorest city in Israel. But they're also per capita the most religious. Or when you examine people on the question of religiosity, the amount they go to services, the amount they study Bible, the amount they pray. Those people show much healthier general qualities, lower blood pressure, higher levels of serenity, a general greater satisfaction in life, a general sense that God is with them in their life. You know, there's a wonderful story in the Torah that we actually read recently. This is now the beginning of Deuteronomy. We read it a few weeks ago. Uh, last week in, in the portion of Mato Mase, which ends the book of Numbers, and it recounts the various stages of the journeys of Israel through the desert. And one of the questions is, why does the Torah bother to tell us about the various stages? Uh, we know that God led them on those that journey, even though it was 40 years longer than it should have been. That said that a cloud and a pillar of fire led them. And one of the ideas there is that the Israelites need to learn for all times, as all people do, that there's the gentle handle, hand of God guiding us through our lives. In fact, who knows what the reason was. The Torah seems to give a reason for the wandering in the desert, but we never know in our own life the twists and turns and the ways it takes why it's happening. And people who feel that God is with them through a gentle guiding hand and can always face the future with optimism, being in touch with God, those people have a happier life. And so it's really a plea for a religiosity of spirit. Uh, if we're interested in happiness, which is not about material wealth, it's about being in connection and tied to God. That is the essence of religion, the essence of Judaism. The Torah begins and ends with the idea of God, that God created the universe, that God gave us the Ten Commandments, that we should know the Lord is one, that we should love God with all our heart, soul, and might. Then everything else comes from that. That is really the essence of what religion is, the reason why it's provided so much comfort for people and why most people have a sense of God in their lives. If we want true satisfaction, it's not 
finding it in, in peripheries and in extraneous and in secondary manners and penultimate things. It's basing it on a life of the spirit, of the ruach. Enthusiasm for life, literally from the Greek, means to be filled with God. And so if we want to be truly happy, if we want to be enthusiastic about life, it's first having a relationship with God of spirit, of ruach, of having our, our neshama linked with God. Because it says that we're made in the image of God, and so we are a piece of God. We're holy, and we are linked with God in that profound way. So I urge you, in the words of Rabbi Nachman of Braslav, to see that it's a mitzvah to try and be always happy. Not happy in acquiring things, but happy with God, and knowing that God is there as a gentle guiding hand through the universe, and that we are never alone, and that God is one.